Hey, PlayStation Bander, what you playing today? Oh, uh, probably some Uncharted, some Infamous, and maybe some Ratchet. What about you? I'm playing Forza, Gears of War, and Halo. Oh, nice. Video games are so cool. Hey, PlayStation Bander, long time no see. What you playing these days? Oh, I, I, I just finished Horizon and God of War, and now I'm playing Spider-Man. How about you? I'm playing Gears of War, Halo, and Forza. Playing the classics? N n no, just, just the latest Xbox games. Oh. PlayStation Bander, how are you? Playing anything cool? Yeah, totally. New game called Returnal, got Ghost of Tsushima, and I just finished The Last of Us Part 2. Cool, I'm playing, let, let me guess, Forza, Gears, and Halo? Uh, just Forza and Halo this year. Uh, but next year though, right? Probably just Forza by then. Oh. Wake up everybody, because today, we gotta talk about Xbox. As you're all well aware, last week Bethesda Games announced that they would have to delay their two big games this year, the co-op open-world vampire shooter Redfall and the massive open-world space RPG Starfield, both announced to be this year and now coming early 2023. What does this mean for Xbox in 2022? Oh god, it's the Xbox One all over again. No, 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 it's not that dire yet. Xbox still has their ace in the hole. So speaking on delays, E3 has also elected not to have a live event this year after ambitiously promising a return to an in-person event last year. E3 is cancelled? Oh man, how will gamers ever eat good again? Luckily, Jeff Keighley and Phil Spencer are here to save the summer. This year, Jeff will be returning to host his Summer Games Fest event on Thursday the 10th, while Xbox will again go with their usual Sunday show, with many of the other usual suspects likely following suit. What that means is that Xbox's biggest chance to recover from what is, frankly, a disaster level delay is right here at E3, I mean, Summer Game Fest. Sounds more like Jeff Key 3 to me, but whatever, close enough. This time last year for Xbox, we knew about two big games, Halo Infinite and Psychonauts 2. At the show, we learned Forza Horizon 5 was also ready to go and would release that November, giving Xbox three solid releases for the second half of the year. 2022, however, Xbox has been completely gameless. Sure, there's been Game Pass stuff and indie exclusives, but it's been a dry year overall. Everything sort of hinged on Starfield and Redfall to a lesser extent, so unless Xbox just wants to throw their hands in the air and say, sorry, we got nothing, this show needs to have something big to cover their loss. Maybe if Xbox does have a big enough show, it'll still feel like E3. Maybe there's still hope. We know Grounded will likely be getting its 1.0 release soon, and Arcane's Deathloop should be coming to Xbox this September, but beyond that, I got some ideas. It's been almost two years since Xbox announced what is basically their entire lineup for the Series X. Fable, State of Decay, Everwild, Avowed, a lot of games that are still very, very far away. One game in particular, Forza Motorsport, was a bit of an oddball since it had been three years since the last entry in the franchise that usually comes out every two years. Now it's been five years and I think we are likely to see Forza Motorsport 8 come out this fall. They have been working on a new engine and they want this to be a bigger platform for the series, so I think this timing is right. Beyond anything else I talk about, this is what I think is most likely to happen. With the power of Xbox Game Pass and money, Microsoft has the option to really cover any major gaps in the release schedule with a few key purchases. And if you can't get first party games out this year, why not offer your players a game they were going to buy, but on Game Pass instead? Things like Saints Row, the new Gotham Knights, or maybe even one of Ubisoft's games like Skull and Bones or Avatar. I remember when Ubisoft used to do E3 shows. They were always terrible. God, I miss them. Now, these wouldn't be exclusive, but it's an easy win. Players would be happy to not have to spend more money and makes for a good E3 announcement. I can definitely see Xbox throwing some money around this year in response to these delays. Finally, that leads us to the last hope for Xbox's 2022. With Xbox's purchase of Bethesda and growth to over 20 game studios, you'd think they wouldn't have such a problem getting games out consistently, but they're still getting things revved up and, you know, pandemic. If you look at each of these studios, we basically know where each one is at game-wise. Coalition is working on a smaller new IP targeting next year, Rare has to go back to the drawing board with Everwild, and it just put out Doom Eternal in 2020, so they're not ready. But there is one team that has been surprisingly without a major release for a while. Alpha Dog Games, everybody, coming to save 2022. In 2014, a reboot of the OG FPS Wolfenstein was released by a fresh studio called Machine Games. The sequel, New Colossus, and its DLC Youngblood released in 2017 and 2019 respectively. That means that it's been three years since the last Machine Games release, and five years since their last fully new game. Now last year, Machine Games did reveal that they are working on a brand new AAA Indiana Jones game with Todd Howard producing. Distant weather systems? Oh, why did it have to be distant weather systems? 
Now, I may be misreading this announcement, but this always felt to me like a very, very early production hiring call. Best way to get more people to apply? Tell them the cool thing they'll be working on. In fact, in a GameStop interview with Bethesda's Pete Hines, Tamar Hussein asked about the status of Wolfenstein. What does the, a lot of people, especially in our community, very excited to figure out or understand or see what the future of Wolfenstein looks like? Is there anything you can tell us about you know, where that franchise is at and where even the Studio Machine Games is at? Is it time for them to look elsewhere or is it, you know, they're, they're working on a few things. So um, well, what is the future of Wolfenstein working on, like? They're working on the Indiana Jones game that we, we just yeah. Um, talked about earlier this year and obviously we literally just announced that deal so you can make your own guesses at how far along that game <laughs> is they're in the very 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 early stages of working on mm -hmm. the indiana jones game um where we are for wolfenstein or quite honestly any other franchise that we don't have announced plans on i'll we'll have to wait until we get to the point of wanting to talk about it but you can put me at the head of the list of people who <laughs> want to see another Wolfenstein game, so no no worries there. I honestly do not see this game coming out for a couple more years at least, but that would be, what, seven, eight years between games? In September 2018, Bethesda's Pete Hines was discussing single-player games in response to Fallout 76 and briefly mentioned that yes, absolutely, we're making a Wolfenstein 3. Well, it's been four years since then, and if Indiana Jones is still a ways out, then I think it's not too far-fetched to think that Wolfenstein 3 is not only getting revealed next month, but is coming in 2022. Nothing would feel more like E3 than Bethesda overpromising. It's a bit of a long shot, but they could have even been getting help from id in the last two years to help smooth out the development process. So that's my advice to this trillion dollar company. Spend millions to bring games free for me to play on Game Pass and release games that might not actually exist. It's foolproof, why would you not listen to us? I think if they're at least able to get Forza and a big third party day one Game Pass title, then it'll be fine. But if not, then it's just going to be a bad year for Xbox, unfortunately. I don't think this is a doom and gloom moment for Xbox or anything, because they have so many studios and so many projects, including what will hopefully be the most polished Bethesda release to date. It really is all up to this key three press conference. It's going to be a big show regardless, and if there isn't anything for 2022, then it's going to be a banger for 2023 news. Plus, with Jeff's show and the likely June 14th Nintendo Direct and even PlayStation's show later this week, it's going to be a great June. Yeah, you're right. It feels just like any old June. Just like... an E3. E3 isn't dead. E3 can't ever die. Because as long as someone, in the vague period of June, has something to show off, E3 will live on. E3 isn't a place. It's a people. Well, for Xbox, 2023 will be the year this all starts coming together, but we will probably have to deal with an unfortunately bad 2022. And that's fine. Not good by any means, but it's not the end of the world. Carbon-based banner, do you think Xbox has any secret games that could be coming out in 2022? In the year 2019, Bethesda Game Studios announced that they are once again digging into their backlog and rebooting a classic, historic, legacy IP. And now, in 2022, it's finally ready for release. Commander Keen, it's your time to save Xbox's 2022.